I want to share a short word with us this morning. And when I say a short word, I saw a few people smile. But it is a short word. I believe I have one sheet of paper with notes. <laughs> so hopefully it will be. Father, would you take your word and would you quicken it to our hearts? Let it find root. Let it produce change. Cause us to hear the voice of the Spirit as he speaks today. And glorify yourself in us. <clears throat> Amen. I want to read from John's Gospel, chapter 9. Verses 1 through 5. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? That is, that is a question that people often ask when they see people sick or lamed or something happening that should not that they think should not be happening you always want to know who sinned somebody sinned but Jesus answered neither this man nor his parents sin but that the works of God shall be revealed in him. I am after somebody's faith. God is saying. I am after somebody's heart. I want to capture the attention of someone. So I have allowed that to happen. I allow things to happen in the earth. Not because necessarily because somebody did something wrong. But because I want to capture people's attention. I want, this, want them to see the works of God and the power of God. That's the reason why things happen at times. And Jesus said, it is so that the works of God should be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Some of the translations say, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. If, if those translations were right, then the works would have been only relegated to Jesus. And when he was gone, those works would end. The New International Virgin, the scholars say, carry the right, the most accurate translation of that passage. The New International Virgin says, we must work the works of him who sent to me while it is day. We must work the works of him who sent to me while it is day. So he is gone. And we must still work the works of him who sent him while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. I want to take this passage and I want to ask three questions. And I want us to answer these three questions. And you've heard this applied to different things, but I want to apply it to this passage today. If not now, when? 
if not this, what? If not me, who? Or if not you, who? Night is coming. Night is coming. The darkness is closing in on us. Very soon, opportunities, freedoms, and desires to work the works of God will be no more. You've only got to look around at the political condition of this country and, and all the things that are happening politically and how the rights of the church are being taken away, the freedoms are being eroded. Very soon, it will become a crime. As a matter of fact, it has already become a crime to speak against certain kinds of sin. They're considered hate crimes. And already more than three quarters of the church has no desire to tell others about Jesus. And half of the other quarter who want to tell do not really believe that the gospel that we preach is the power of God unto salvation. They don't really believe that. But if we don't do it now, when will we do it? Gradually, the freedom to proclaim the gospel and to speak against sin is being eroded. Night is coming. People are becoming more and more hardened and indifferent against the gospel. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 and 2 says... We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an accepted time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the day of God's favor. Not sometime in the future, but now. We don't know how long we will have. Excuse, we don't know how long the freedoms will remain. But now we can do it. The second question that we ask is if not this, then what? The whole world is on a downward spiral of moral and spiritual roller coaster that is out of control. All are headed for eternal destruction unless they respond to the gospel. The gospel is man's only hope. Man has no other hope except the gospel. It is the only power by which salvation takes place. It is the power of God unto salvation. So if not this, if not the gospel, then what? The question I ask us is, what are you sharing? What are you sharing? When you talk with people, what are you sharing? When you talk about their problems and their issues, what are you sharing? When you talk with your friends and your family members, what are we talking about? If not this, then what? What can help them? 
What can save them? What can turn the direction of their lives? God wants to display his power in the lives of men and women. We must not recoil and decide that man is hopeless or beyond reach. The more sinful and devastating the effects of sin, the greater the display of God's power and glory. So if not this, then what? It is the power of God unto salvation. In John 9, 3, Jesus said, This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in this man's life. God wants to display power, his power, in the lives of people. Because people are harassed and helpless. In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus looked at the multitude of people as they were going around. And he said, the, uh, he said to the disciples, look at them. They are harassed and helpless. And that's what the devil is doing today. You've just got to walk around and look at people as they move around. And you will see people that are harassed and helpless. I was driving by the Boston Medical Center recently. And I looked around. And it was heart-wrenching to see people around that area harassed and helpless. I was walking through Brockton not very long ago, and I saw the same thing. People harassed and helpless. And the only thing that can help them, the doctors can't help them anymore. Some of them, their minds are blown. They don't know what day it is. They don't know who they are. They are useless to themselves and to their families and to society. They are harassed and helpless. But we carry the power that can set them free. Let me say that again. We carry the power that can set them free. It is the power of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit that is within us. The Bible says that power is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we ask. God is able to do it by the power that is in us, the power of his Holy Spirit. And I want to challenge us today. I want to challenge you to rise up in faith. Cast down your rod. It might turn to a snake. Take it by the tail. Take it by the tail. Take what you have as God anoints it. Take what you know as God anoints it. And begin to use it. Begin to shear it. Begin to tell others. And see the power of God at work. The power of the gospel is the only thing that can set man free. So begin to shear it. How dare you close your mouth and talk about the news and current affairs and all kinds of foolishness with people who are on their way to hell. People who are bound and harassed and helpless. When you have in your mouth the power that can set them free. I want to challenge 
challenge us with it today. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 9, in verses 35 uh, through chapter 10, verse 8, and I'd like you to read that on your own. After Jesus looked and he saw that the people were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, the Bible says he called his disciples and he said two things to them. He said, I want you to pray about that. I want you to pray about that. He said, the harvest is ripe. That's the harvest. It's ripe and it's ready to be harvested, but the laborers are few. I want you to pray about that. But I don't just want you to pray. We like to pray, don't we? And that's all people like to do. Pray and leave it to God. While God is waiting on us to do something. Jesus said to them, pray. But then he said to them, go into the harvest. And that is the command that he is giving us today. There are people that God has brought around you that you don't even understand yet why they're there. And he has only brought them for one purpose. So that you might help them. He's brought them so that you can share the gospel with them. So I urge you today, pray, but go. If not the gospel, then what? Then what can help them? The last command of our Lord Jesus Christ was, to go and make disciples. A disciple is someone who has received eternal life and who is being trained in the lifestyle of the kingdom of God until they are restored to the image and the likeness of God and are making disciples. That's what a disciple is. But the first thing that happens is that they must receive eternal life. We must share the gospel with them so that they might believe in Jesus and receive him. Eternal life is in him and in him alone. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, Verses 11 and 12, this is the record. God has given us eternal life, but this life is in his son. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life of God. So the first thing that we do is to share the gospel with people so that they might believe in Jesus and receive him, thus receiving the life of God, eternal life. And then we invite them into our lives so that they might, might be able to learn the lifestyle of the kingdom from us. And that, that presents us with a huge responsibility. We must be living the lifestyle of the kingdom. So that, they, so that they learn from us. They look at us and know how to live. Listen. The ungodly, the unbelievers, will only look at us to learn how to live. At first, they might not agree with how you live. As a matter of fact, they might criticize how you live. <laughs> they might laugh at you the way that you live. <laughs> they will call you foolish. And sometimes we become so foolish that we listen to them and change the way that we live because we want to please them or because we want to be loved by them. But I challenge you with this. You continue to live like Jesus. You continue to live the lifestyle of the kingdom. And those same people who laugh at you today will come crying to you tomorrow. 
they will come asking for your help you will hear them say I want what you have I want to be like you but if we change so that we might fit in then we become irrelevant they don't want to come to they will not come to us anymore they uh, they will say you see what I tell you so if not you then who I ask myself that question I want you to ask yourself that question I want you to say if not me then who go ahead if not me then who I, I want you to ask yourself again but uh, if not me then who ask ourselves because God is counting on us Jesus said we must work the works of him who sent me at that time he was speaking to his 12 disciples that question or that command is still for you and me today he is still saying the same thing to us we must work the works of him who sent me we we must work the works we must work the work listen the disciples then grasp that not only the 12 but look through the book of acts and you will see the disciples grasp that and they understood it that it was not just jesus who was expected to work the works of god it was we and they understood that they were included in the we so they went about doing the same things that jesus did and listen they did even greater things than jesus did I, I don't read, I don't think I read anywhere where, where Jesus wiped his face with a, with a, a, a piece of cloth and, 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 and people took that piece of cloth and, and touched themselves and they were healed. I don't think I read anywhere where Jesus walked and his shadow touched people and as his shadow touched people they were healed. I don't see it. but I see that in the book of Acts among the we and I believe that God wants us to understand that we Dominique we you must work the works of God Inez I know that sometimes we think of oh poor little me no but I tell you if you take that whatever it is that you have in your head uh, you take that little bit of knowledge that you have in your head and you step out in faith and 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 you command the waters to part with it because now god has anointed it those words will come out of your mouth vic and heal the sick and break the hearts the stony hearts of those who are rebelling against god if we step out in faith we will work the works of God who sent 
Jesus. And don't wait until you, you've had a Bible school education and, and somebody pray over you to become pastor and, uh, and, and, and all that kind of religious stuff. That's just religious stuff. Listen, God wants to use you just as you are right now. So open your mouth right now with wherever he has positioned you and whoever he has positioned around you, whether it is in school, is it, in, it is in college, it, it, it is in, it, it, it is in uh, the, uh, the gym, it is in wherever, it is in the office, wherever he has positioned you, he wants to use you there to work the works of God that he gave to Jesus to do. If not you, then who? Note that language that Jesus spoke. As long as it is they, we must work the works of him who sent me because night is coming. I promise you, night is coming. It is getting darker and darker by the day. It is getting dark. And, 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 and it would not be long when you might have to shut your mouth. Or it might not be long when you are no more. Because night has come and taken you away. Or it might not be long when night comes for the person that you are supposed to share the gospel with. The person who is supposed to experience the power of God through your life. It might not be long before night comes for them. And the opportunity to share is no longer there. Jesus said in John chapter 9 and verse 5, he went on to say, While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But listen to this. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, he says, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. He was the light of the world. But you, Trent, are the light of the world. You are the light of the world, Myra. You are. You are. I saw Gloria this morning. Oh, yes, there you are. It's been a long time since I saw you. I'm so happy to see you. You are the light of the world. You are. You might not think so. You might not feel so. But you are, Inez. You are the light of the world. People must be able to look at you and find their way to Jesus. Find their way to God. You are the light of the world. In Acts chapter 13 verse 47... It says, I have set you to be a light to the Gentiles for salvation. I have set you to be a light to the Gentiles for their salvation. God has set you to be a light to the Gentiles, to the sinners, to the unbelievers for their salvations. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 says, You were once darkness, but now you are light to those who are darkness. In Philippians 2 verse 15 it says, That in this perverse 
generation, we shine as lights. In this perverse generation, we shine as lights. The more dense the darkness becomes, the brighter we shine. And I challenge you to shine. If not now, when? If not this, then what? And if not you, then who will work the works of him who sent Jesus? That's my challenge to us today.